I am Brad, you put yourself on tape for Casper, right? Yeah. And so were you aware that it was like this, like really small part, end of the movie, like quick come in? Like what were your thoughts when you were like put yourself on tape? I had no idea. I knew it was Casper. I remember it so much. And I had this, this uh, older actor come over and help me with it. And he just convinced me to do the dance, like just to pretend I was dancing. And we were in the foyer of my of my living room. And I remember the sun was coming through it. And, and I just got into it and just kind of twirled around the room as if I, I was dancing with a girl. And then said, I, can I keep your, one of the lines, um, to, as if I was pretending she was, you know, yeah. with me. And then the VHS tape went into the FedEx and, and I forgot all about it. Two weeks later, I got a call. And they're like, come down and, and we want you to meet with, you know, the people, the powers of be and, and uh, the rest is history. Did you ever meet the guy who did the voice for Casper? I didn't. And I told <laughs> you know, the poor guy, he, he did, he really did all the work. And um, he was a couple of years younger than me. And, um, you know, he was a couple of years younger than Christina, obviously. And so he, they didn't know they were bringing Casper back to life. It was a last minute thing. They still mm. didn't, when they thought it, they still didn't know whether they were gonna use it or not. And so here I come, you know, I shot maybe a day and a half, two days. He did a phenomenal job and, you know, he's yeah. done all the stuff, you know, power to him and props to him and all due respect. and. Yada, yada, yada. So it's your first movie role. You have like one day, it's a big scene, and you have to yeah. do an on-screen kiss. Yeah. How nervous are you at that age? <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't nervous. Christina's, Christina's the, uh, she was a beautiful girl and I was a, you know, a young boy and, and I just like, it, I don't know. The, the day was just very easy and everybody was very respectful and it was just kind of like, it was exciting. I, you know, I, I can't lie. I, I, you know, I, I remember being excited the whole day. It was just a lot yeah. of fun. So, how many times a day does someone tweet at you? Can I keep you? And how lots, sick of it are you? Lots. Well, I get. Uh, I leave my. Um, I leave my Instagram. I don't know if I should say this online. I leave it open my my messages just in case you know somebody reaches out that has something that I can help them with. But I get a lot of of uh, can I keep you or or that stuff. It's, it's flattering, I, I don't, it's yeah. not the, there could be a lot worse things. I could be getting <laughs> naked pictures of whatever, who knows, but I get, <laughs> my, my DMs are full of people saying, can I keep you or, you know, now and then quotes or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I love that you're able to, you know, look back on your old roles with affection and, you know, be able to appreciate them. Did it yeah. take you kind of a while though to like reach that point? Cause I'm sure like when, like you said, when you were like 18, 19, you know, you're like, oh God, like Casper, like, I don't want to talk, like never. So, you know, what do you think helped you like get to that point? And be able um, to like appreciate I just I came to the realization that it's not going to stop. You know, <laughs> like, I think Instagram and Twitter made me realize like, okay, I, I just got to embrace this because it's, it's, um, it's here to stay. Um, this, those parts got me to the next parts that got me to the next parts that got me to where I am right now. Uh, if I didn't have some, I mean, I have some fans that have been with me for so long. And if those fans weren't still with me, then I probably wouldn't, you know, have been up for Chucky or, or whatnot. I just love it all. You know, I, I, I will talk about that stuff, you know, when I have to, or when I, when I. For annoying like, people like me who are like childhood. <laughs> want to know people that want to still hear then i'll talk about it even like at you know halloween time knowing casper is like such a part of people's lives it must be like a weird very like particular experience to know that you played such a defining role in so many people's like childhood and coming of yeah. age well that's is that like is that like weird to think about sometimes <laughs> it's uh i i don't get it because it wasn't my movie i i mean i don't know if, 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 if it was my age or whatever but like it is very special to know that 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 movie and now and then both impacted so many people, particularly that 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 part, that scene. It's flattering and and uh, that's why I still talk about it. Really, it's just it's you know it's it impacted yeah. a lot of people. So good. I love that you're able to like have fun with it too. Like you and Chloe yeah. Polkin when you guys had your Twitter and then yeah. the interview with Vulture. Like I just love being able to like. I think it makes people feel okay for loving the things they love. It's funny because I'll, I'll be like to my to my manager, like I don't want to talk about Casper, and then like and then ten minutes later I'll tweet something like, oh, Casper is like you know like I completely go exactly against what I just said.